hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the channel. My name is Lindsay, and this is Life with Lindsay. Today, we have a whip and chat. Uh, before we get into it, a few boring housekeeping tips. If you hear a noise, um, it's kind of in front of me this time. I have my fan running. I'm recording this while the tiny human is sleeping. However, my husband is in the room. You'll probably hear his computer making noises. If you don't hear him making husband noises, say, hi, husband. Hello. He's working on a bunch of boxes, so... If you guys don't know, my husband customizes Fungo Pops, and he is currently working on uh, boxes for said custom Fungo Pops. And oddly enough, every time he needs to make a box, Photoshop needs to update. So, a whip and chat. If you don't know what a whip and chat is, whip is W-I-P. It stands for work in progress. Uh, I will be working on my pirate princess from Dreamer Designs, as I have this bag of tools just strewn across my desk. Uh, you can pull out whatever it is you are working on and work alongside with me. You can have me streaming in the background while you're doing housework, which we'll be talking about, or driving to work, or, you know, to just feel like you have some company. So, I am going to preface this by saying, um, I don't know where, like, the end of this whip and chat will go, but I can tell you that it's going to start off with something, um, that isn't super happy. So if you guys are in a depressive kind of state right now and you can't comfortably listen to somebody else talk about what's going on in their world, I would suggest um, skipping this one out. So um, you will also see me rotating through a large variety of pens in this video. That's for something else. And that's it. So um let me get where i'm at if you hear beeping that is my timer so we had a lovely morning originally i was going to come on here and tell you guys all about the week that we had and ice skating and uh what's in store for next week and and things like that but i have some stuff that I've been going back and forth whether i should even record this let alone should i publish it so uh, if you see this, then obviously I've decided to put it up. Um, I've always been a big proponent of it's okay to not be okay. And, um, I've never really been shy of some of my own mental health struggles, but today has been a difficult day and... Uh, if you guys, like I said, if you're not here for that, I totally understand. I've got lots and lots of other content available on this channel. Uh, hopefully something there will catch your eye. So, today we went to the grocery store this morning. My husband and my daughter's medications both get refilled at our, um, the drugstore inside of our, our, uh, little, 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 little. supermarket. Ooh, couldn't think of the word. Um, and he was going to go last night to pick it up, but I was like, I'm pretty sure on the weekends that the pharmacy closes early. He's like, oh, really? So we looked, they were closed. Um, and this is like 630. So I think they closed at six, but either way, it was not open. So he's like, well, we can go tomorrow. And I said, okay. And the day I'm recording this is Sunday. And I said, I'm pretty sure that on Sundays they don't open till later. I was right. So, we finally got around to getting to the market this morning, and, God, I hate that when I, like, put my pen down and I just, I'm off and it makes them all pop. Like, what's that game? Perfection? They all pop. And, uh, so we got our medication, we got all of our stuff, so we were doing fine. My kiddo has only been to the market a couple times, and that's only been in the last, like, month or two, because we're trying to, you know, instill some normalcy back into our lives, and, you know, all that fun stuff. So, of course, we're over getting the medication, and why they have a toy display right there <laughs> is beyond me. But she doesn't know who Hello Kitty is. She just saw that it's a cat. And she freaked out. She was like, I want the cat. Of course, we were like, you don't need... You don't even know what it is. We don't need it. So, she started tantruming in the... In the... Uh... Store. The grocery store. Guys, words are difficult for me tonight. And... 
the best part was like some older gentleman walked by and she's like, can you buy me this? And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so she was just, you know, trying to convince a stranger to buy her a toy that she didn't need. But that kind of should have given me an indication of how the rest of the day was going to go. So um, from there, we went to go pick up lunch. Now, my daughter had leftover mac and cheese in the fridge that she housed yesterday. So we were like, all right, we're going to give her the... Um, oh, my God. What am I trying to say? The leftovers. You guys, I'm sorry. And... We were just going to pick up Panera Bread for my husband and I. Now, Panera Bread, if you guys have done, like, a to-go order from Panera Bread, like, it literally takes, like, 10 minutes. So, I placed the order, and it said it would be ready in 15 minutes. Well, 15 minutes came and went, and now we are sitting at Panera in their curbside pickup. Another 15 minutes have come and gone. And then a couple minutes later, I get a text saying, oh, your order is now ready. I think it was supposed to be ready at 11.50, and it was now 12.15, and it was another 10 minutes until it came out. So by this time, my kid is, like, stupid hungry, screaming, you know, of course mommy has a snack in the car. Is it the snack she wants? Of course not, because toddlers. If you have a toddler, or if you've ever had a toddler, you probably feel me on that. And if you do, solidarity, my friend. So, we came home. We had lunch. She, uh... I was like, alright, let's hope she sleeps. She did not sleep. So, I went downstairs. So, the way it works, because I've always said I record when my child is sleeping, or quote-unquote sleeping. So, her nap time is usually, we put her down around 1.30ish. And if she goes to sleep, it's almost never right away. She usually frolics around her room. Excuse me, just, you know, has a jolly old time in there. Today was no different. So, for reference, my child has an armoire, a rocking chair, a set of drawers, and a bed. And then on her bed, she has a weighted blanket... She calls it her fuzzy blanket and her mini blanket. So she has three blankets on her bed, uh, a pillow, and then she has a seahorse that, like, if you're a child of the 80s, it's like a glow worm. Um, you just squeeze it, it lights up and plays music. So, anyway, she had that going, and um, my husband and I were both up here working, and we could hear her just singing away, and... You can tell the difference between her, I don't want to say being destructive because, well, um, or you can tell when she's having a good time versus it's like her being overworked and stressed and all that fun stuff. So, or at least I thought you could. So, um, I put her down at 1.30-ish, give or take. Usually between 1.30 and 2. And if she sleeps, we get her around 4.30. Um, sometimes I'll have to go in and wake her up. And if she doesn't sleep, I just let her play in her room until about 4 o'clock. Now, she doesn't have any toys in her room. We let her go up with, we call them one soft friend. It's one stuffed animal, but... Um, we'll let her go up with one of those and that's it because if there's too much stuff in her room, then she is so distracted and won't go to sleep. It's been like this since she was little. I mean, she's still little. She's three. <laughs> I don't know how much littler I expected her to be in this conversation. But anyway, so I go in there today around four o'clock. Um, I was thinking... Oh, this is going to be a good day today. Oops, sorry. I have my... I'm using the Elizabeth Ward storage system. And I have my containers, like, directly under the recording arm. So I tried to... Sorry, Katie, if you're watching, I know it stresses you out. But um, I have, like, a bunch of colors on my desk right now. Because I thought it was easier to do that and just grab what I needed than to just keep potentially hitting the recording arm. 
I guess it didn't matter because I still hit the recording arm. Anyway, so I go into her room and all of her drawers have child safety, I don't want to call them locks because they're not locks, but child safety locks on them. And I walk in and there is clothing everywhere. And when I tell you everywhere, I mean everywhere, all over her dresser, all over the floor, in her bed, on her rocking chair. She's wearing a totally different outfit than she went to sleep in, which it was 90 something degrees here today. And she's walking around in a long sleeve peplum. And I was like, girlfriend, like you can't wear that. So she got so mad. So um, earlier today I had done a huge load of laundry. My husband needed if you guys see him in like every video ever, he's wearing a black t-shirt. He needed more of his t-shirts. And I was like, okay, well, we can't do the laundry until we empty the dryer. And we can't empty the dryer unless I have somewhere to put said clothing. If you guys have a tiny human, you probably understand this plight of you can't put the laundry away while they're sleeping because you need to be in their room. But it's hard to find time during the day when they are around to do it because they can't be around or they're going to empty the drawers, the baskets, whatever it is that you're doing. But then you need to have somebody else there, like my husband's home. So he took her while I did the laundry. But I had to do all that just so I could start a load of laundry. So I was already annoyed that, like, I'm up here folding 8 billion pieces of clothing that are inevitably going to sit into a laundry basket until... Um, God knows when. And then I walk into her room and I'm like, are you shitting me? I was livid because she destroyed the lock, just pulled it apart. I mean, this, this kid is strong, but like that must have taken some brute strength to pull those because I, I don't know how she did it. And she seemed to think she has done nothing wrong, even though she knows damn well. Like, you don't go into the drawers, you don't go into the dresser, you don't... All these things that you don't do, which I'm sure someone's going to have something to say about that. You shouldn't tell them no. Like, okay, well, she's three. So now, I'm spending time basically doing what I did in terms of laundry, where I have to pull everything back out, fold it back up, and sort it and put it away. So I'm super annoyed. At this point, I'm, like, overwhelmingly annoyed. And I know, I know that it is our job as parents to be there for our kids when they are in their moments of need, but I didn't want to be there for her in that moment because I was really mad and I was feeling, um, whether it was warranted or not, feeling super underappreciated and, um, like, my worth was just literally just in, in laundry. And that was it. And I know that's not the case. I know my kid loves me for more than doing her laundry. I know my husband loves me for more than doing his laundry. But it felt like that in that moment. And it was so hard to get out of that. And then I came downstairs after I finally uh, got all of her stuff situated. Um, but before I did that... I decided, well, since I did the laundry, the adult laundry, and somehow none of my husband's shirts, like two of his shirts ended up in there, I found them on the floor, and so I was like, okay, well, I might as well do another load, and, um, because all of the adult laundry I had already folded, sorted, and put away, and I knew the dryer was empty, so I was like, let me just get the rest of this done so that we don't have to worry about it, so I was like, let me do his t-shirts, and our linens, uh, which were long overdue. So I took my pillow that I've had since I was a child out of the pillowcase. And then I realized for the first time in, I don't know, my entire life that it was in like four pillowcases. It was like one of those Russian nesting dolls. Like I would literally unzip it and take it out. And then there was another pillowcase. And then I would unzip it and take it out and there was another pillowcase. And eventually I was like, Jesus, how many pillowcases are on this pillow? So I got down to one. I think this was the third or fourth one. Not including the one I, I put my head on to sleep at night. 
And I know it's old because it has my mom's handwriting in permanent marker on that pillowcase. And it has my name on it, which means she wrote on it when I went to camp so that people would know that was my pillow. Um, not to be confused with my pillow from, what's his name, Mike Lindell. Um, anyway, so I got to what I'm assuming is the last of the pillowcases. And I noticed there's like this orange powdery stuff and I'm like what the hell is this and then I realized like oh it looks like rust but I didn't know if rust could powder so I didn't know exactly what it was so the zipper was stuck I work on it real gingerly and I finally get it to start to open and then I noticed that the pillow that I've had my entire life that I that I cannot sleep without that I take with me if we're going to stay in a hotel for a night. Like, I literally cannot sleep without this pillow. Has completely disintegrated. And all that's left on the inside of my pillow is just this orange dust. So now, I have no pillow. And I have no other pillows in the house to replace it with. Because they're all, like, decorative pillows. Or they're really, like, big, fluffy pillows. Like, this is... I call it my squishy. And I know somebody's probably watching this right now being like, this is not something to get upset over. But for me, this is something to get upset over. And it's been like really hard for me to get over the fact of how I'm already feeling between the way my kid's been treating me today with all the stuff with the laundry, with all the stuff with her, um, her bedroom, and then to have this happen on top of it. And I'm just like, I'm over it. Like I just... I just, I, something has got to give. And, um, I know, I know that there are going to be some people that watch this and are going to be able to totally sympathize or empathize or just their heart's going to go out to me. And I do appreciate that. And I know for a fact that there will be person, people, however many of you out there that are thinking that I'm literally crying over something super minuscule and small and I know that's what minuscule means but um you know when you have that one comfort item that that's that's how you go to sleep and now it's completely destroyed like it's a lot and then I went downstairs to find my daughter was excuse me in uh one of her world famous I just don't give a shit moods and her favorite thing to do right now is to just swing her arm back and forth like that in front of your face in hopes that you will flinch like she's going to hit you and to say that it drives us insane is an understatement like it is it is so annoying and we have done everything that the experts have told us to do acknowledge it don't acknowledge it ignore it redirect it you know I've done things you're not supposed to do like parenting is hard and they don't tell you there are certain things your kid will do that will make you want to just scream and cry and hide and run away and she just kept compiling all of these behaviors on top of each other. And I was like, I'm going to lose my shit. I'm going to lose my shit. So here I am, already overwhelmed, already super sad, already, like, feeling like I just need to hang on, just need the day to just make it through. Um, and feeling like such a shitty mom because I can't get my kid to just stop doing that. And then she starts spitting on me. And I'm like, kid... Like, I don't have it in me. I don't have it in me to be a good parent right now. I don't have it in me to be the bigger person or the stronger person. Like, I... Everything just compiled at once. And... I, uh... Excuse me. I'm really sorry. I don't have any tissues over here. And I'm just, like, sniffling all over the place. But I just had a really, really difficult time. And then, um, my husband had said to her, you know, like, knock it off. Like, leave mommy alone. And this whole time that I'm downstairs with her, he's making dinner. 
and I could hear her and him when I was upstairs doing laundry where I, I couldn't hear the exacts of it, but he would tell her what he was chopping or, you know, working with or whatever. I don't like that. I don't want to eat that. All things she loves and eats all the time, might I add. And, um... I was just like, oh, good. So I already knew I was going into something where there's a lot in this. Yep, that's exactly what I was trying to avoid happening. That is full to the max, full to the max. So I get downstairs and, you know, she's already, she's in a mood. I'm in a mood. My husband's just basically like, okay, well, now there's another adult down here and I can finish cooking dinner. Uh... Because if you've been here long enough, you know, we don't really do like TV throughout the day and not because we don't want to, but we don't have the kind of child that you can just turn on an episode of Mickey and let her sit in front of it while you cook dinner. If you do that, that is the end of the day. That is the end of the night. That is signaling to her brain that that is her nighttime routine. That is telling her that she doesn't need to eat dinner. Um, and that's it. So... She can't transition out of it. She has a really, really tough time. So that's why we don't do it. So in that instance, that's, you know, I know he would have loved to have been able to just throw the TV on and just get dinner done without her being up his butt. And for those who know that my husband cooks because being in the kitchen gives me anxiety, that's one of the things when he was still working out of the house, like outside of the house, not like from within my house. Um, I would cook dinner and I had to do it all alone. And I don't mean that in like a, oh my God, I can't believe my husband wasn't here when I had to cook dinner. Like he was at work, but it is so hard to get anything accomplished in that kitchen. Like even just sweeping up the, the mess on the floor is impossible to do because she's got to be up your butt. She's got to touch everything, and I just got this new broom called a Vubroom, which if you've ever heard of one, let me know. If you have one, let me know. But it is an electronic broom that has like a vacuum attachment, I guess. You basically like sweep it up into a pile and then you use the suction part and it, it sucks it all up, if that helps. So anyway, um... So yeah, it, it was always hard like when he was working for me to cook because... You would pull out a cutting board and a knife and she would just be like, this is the moment I need you in the living room right now, mommy. And it's like, kid, I've got to make dinner. Man, look at me just stabbing the same drill over and over again. So, um, there was that. And then after dinner, she reverted right back to, uh, I don't know what to call it because, like, I don't want to say she was acting entitled because it's not the right word. But she, the second she got out of her high chair, threw a tantrum because she wanted Mickey. And I was like, girl, I haven't even gotten you out of my high, your high chair yet. And before anyone tries to tell me, like, well, you guys created the problem yourself. We know how this works. But we also know that if we're, like, if we actively tell her there's no Mickey tonight then that causes problems and obviously uh whether people agree with it or not we use that as a parenting tactic when she's behaving terribly to be like well you don't get Mickey tonight that's like her one thing is it right probably not but that's how we do things and um I'm not gonna judge you on how you parent don't judge me on how I parent my kid is happy and healthy-ish I mean, she's healthy. She just has underlying health conditions. Anyway, so I put her down and then my husband was like, that's it. You're just going to go right to bed. And he brought her upstairs and I totally just broke down on the couch. I'm a shitty mom. I'm a shitty wife. Like, just like, why am I struggling the way I am? Why are these little things knocking me? on my butt and by the way yes he's in the room but he has earbuds in so he's not listening to me he's working on it oh are you oh i have a earbud in he has one singular earbud in um because i i figured somebody was probably gonna be like isn't your husband gonna react to what you're saying 
Um, but it just, I don't know, today just really knocked me down hard. And I'm really struggling to get back to, like, feeling okay and being okay. And that's why I came on and did this. I mean, I normally record my whip and chats excuse me, on, uh, Sunday, just because it's, like, the easiest way to recap the week and then to tell you what's coming up, um, not because of any sort of schedule, and there's plenty of times where I don't have a whip and chat up on Monday or whatever day of the week. It just happens to be that since we've started having a bit of a schedule with her in terms of, like, activities, that this is what seems to be working. So, um, and I make zero promises or guarantees, so if anyone's like, oh, yay, every Monday there's going to be a whip and chat, I, I'm not going that far. But, anyway, so it has just been, like, super, super hard for me to just shake it, and for people who don't deal with anxiety, they just tell you, well, just don't think about it. Just get over it. It's not that big of a deal. And it's like, for me, when I'm trapped in this super overwhelmed cycle, whatever the cause of it may be, it just feels like I'm trapped under this, like, weighted blanket. And I just can't escape. Like, I know it's heavy, and I know I can get away from it, but I can't figure out how. And... Uh, so here I am, crying to you guys, because I'm having a really tough time, and, um, I know that I'm certainly not alone, and I know that there are certainly people who are watching this that can relate, and that there are going to be people who watch this and can't relate, and that's okay too, um... But, like, there's a, a meme that's been going around for a while, and it's like, uh, when someone tells a depressed person to just be happy, and that's how you get over it, or a, a person with anxiety, just don't worry. Oh, yeah, thanks. I never thought of that. But my brain doesn't let me not worry. My brain doesn't let me just keep going. It just replays over and over and over and the things that are bringing me down it's like this constant reminder that oh you don't think you're good enough well you're not good enough why would you think you're good enough the moment you have a moment of like I am good enough your body is like just kidding you're not and it knocks you back down and I know like I said I know a lot of people deal with this and I know a lot of people don't and it's just, today's been hard. Today's been really hard for me. And it sucks because I want to think that I'm doing something right and that my kid loves me for just being me and that my husband loves me for just being me and it's my brain self-sabotaging myself, being like, you're not worthy of this. You don't deserve this. The happiness part. Obviously, my body is telling me I very much deserve to be overwhelmed and sad and hurt. And those are the emotions that my brain is telling me to live in. And I just can't shake that. Now, does this mean that I won't wake up tomorrow feeling totally fine? Like, I could. Um, I might not. I, I don't know. Um... Whew. So, uh, if you've ever wanted to know what it was like to live with anxiety, uh, this is what it looks like a lot of times for me. And I know, like, I'll have something that will seem so little to my husband, to other people, and they just don't understand why it takes me out. And, like, I wish I could say that... I understood why being in the kitchen made me feel the way it did or why 
doing the laundry made me feel the way it did. And then when I complain about it, it just makes me sound like, how come I can't get done the basic household chores that, like, most people can do? Oh, excuse me. I do apologize. If anybody's listening with earbuds in, um, I really apologize. Uh, and I am not one of those people that is going to attempt to, like, edit out all my sniffles. I feel like I should probably pause the video and go get some tissue paper. Tissue paper? Toilet paper. Um, but I feel like I'm still gonna have a runny nose and, um, anyway. So, my husband put my daughter to bed. I could tell it was not a pleasant experience for either of them. Um, for those wondering, the typical household day looks like I get her up in the morning and then I bring her downstairs and while I'm getting her up and downstairs, he's usually preparing her medicine, her milk cup, fruit, breakfast, all that fun stuff. And then, um, and not always, but this is like typically what happens. And... Then I take her up for a nap and pick her up from a nap, usually. And then he takes her to bed. And that's when they do their little nighttime routine together. They watch pizza reviews. Um, and they, they snuggle and then he puts her to bed. And that's the end of that. That's the end of the day. Night night. So, um... I could hear the two of them were both very emotional and he came downstairs and he said do you want to go upstairs and tell your daughter um good night and that you love her and I was like do I have to and I know somebody's gonna be like oh my god you monster um I was just not in the right headspace because my child had pissed me off to the point of like anger not just like annoyed or pissed like angry and then I could tell that upset him because he just wanted me to just go upstairs and say goodnight to her. She just needed the reassurance that mommy and daddy love her always, which we tell her that like every single day because anytime she does something wrong or malicious, the first thing she says is, I love you every single time. And we've told her a million times, Briar, we love you more than anything. We will always love you does not matter like we will always love you so um I sat for like a minute or two and then I went upstairs and immediately the second I opened the door she reached right for me and she you could see she was really sad and um and she in turn was also having a difficult night because of everything going on with me and how I affected the mood of my child and my husband and our household and um you know that is a shitty feeling knowing that like well you're pretty much to blame for how she's acting right now too which nobody said that like my husband didn't say it's your fault she's acting the way she is I'm just saying that and then um so I went up and I I gave her a huge hug and I let her know I said mommy loves you I always love you even if I'm mad at you I still love you even if I don't like you very much I still love you and uh I know that she had a rough time because she went right to sleep and um so that's how my night has gone and I'm, uh, what are we? Yeah, I was gonna say, I've gotta be over a half hour by now. So I am just hoping that tomorrow turns around for me, for her, like for everyone. My husband picked up some stuff to make turkey burgers. Listen, if you are a meat eater, okay, because I know people who are vegetarian and be like, huh, but nobody you know no restaurant you know no anybody you know makes better turkey burgers than my husband <laughs> he oh my god my nose is like running like crazy i'm gonna get yeah, a tissue 
you want me to grab your paper towel? Uh, that would be great. I'm like yeah, literally I'm like snotting down my so, face. So. so not like I'm typically when I'm painting and can't move. Thank you. Um Oh my gosh. You guys are so glad that you guys couldn't see my face for that because like it was literally like uh, anyway, so we don't have a grill anymore because our grill, we didn't take proper care of it and it kind of like disintegrated and um, so we don't have a grill. But anyway, my husband makes the best turkey burgers and if you don't like like any kind of heat, then you won't like these. Um, but he does it. Did you grab a bell pepper? What? Yeah. Okay. So he sautés, I'm not going to give away all the trades of, of the tricks of the trade, but he sautés bell pepper and onion together and then he mixes that into the meat once it's cooled and then uh that helps give it some more moisture because turkey is much drier than um beef and he does that and then he melts some like spicy pepper jack cheese on top and he does slices of avocado and it's so good we haven't had them easily a year and a half I mean, at least we have a cast iron, so even though we don't have a grill. Yeah, so we still have a method to cook it, just not the preferred method. So, um, when we were at the market today, that's one of the things we were going for, is to get stuff for burgers tomorrow. And just, like, a couple little random household things, like, she needed milk. We desperately needed uh, trash bags. Somehow... We had a huge thing of trash bags, and neither one of us can find it. And I don't think we finished it, but I don't know where it went. So, we have that that's going on. So, um, we have some big things planned for the upcoming week. But, um, I guess let me touch on the previous week. So, Monday we had OT, and it was fine. Nothing special. Tuesday we had ice skating and it's very it seems to be like clockwork one week is a fantastic week and then the next week just sucks and that's exactly what happened we this week she she did good she just it was like a fight to get her to stay out on the ice and to stop like she will say I so hungry I'm like you are not hungry you just ate breakfast and you had a snack in the car, which, oops, you know, gosh, kids, man. And then, um, she was doing like really good. She was like standing up on her own. She was actually starting to take steps this time. So we had asked our instructor, like, hey, I know the rule is two spectators per child, but do you think we could bring my mother-in-law with us? And she's like, yeah, that's fine. Just don't go around announcing that you have a third person with you. And if you guys are wondering, my husband and I are one and two. So we called her and we were like, oh, you know, we would love for you to, you know, come and see her in action. And she's like, is it cold there? We're like in the ice rink? Yeah. Yes, it's cold in the ice rink. It's a room filled with ice and... This is a woman who would literally drive, like, hours to go watch one of her older granddaughters in, like, gymnastics competitions, was it, I guess? Um, so... What symbol is that? Is that an N? So, we were talking about it, and she's like, yeah, I don't think I'd like to come. And we were like, what? But now, mind you, I love my mother-in-law, don't get me wrong. But again... She, this is the only young grandchild she has. All of her other grandchildren are in their teens and 20s. And we thought for sure this would be the thing. Like she I wouldn't come. she would be ecstatic. Me too. And she was just like, uh, no thanks. And she said it no, so nonchalantly like it was no big deal that she had just... Like we shouldn't be surprised. Right. That we were like inconveniencing her by, you know, pity offering her or whatever. But we really thought she'd want to come. So, um... So that's not going to happen. And then Wednesday we had our speech therapy, which this was the first week that we had tried the, they shortened her. They had, we had a quick IEP meeting last week and, or the week before or whatever it was now. And they had adjusted her to 
30 minutes a session instead of 45 minutes a session. So she is now down to two hours a month of speech, which is still a long time. Like, it's not like... Her other one, she gets 30 minutes every other week. But because this coming week is a holiday week, they kind of shifted a lot of the sessions around. We were supposed to have all three of our providers. And then on Friday, like five minutes before her session, her head teacher called and said, I'm so sorry to do this. And I said, look, it's family first. If you have a family, her son was sick and needed to go to urgent care. I said, that's totally fine. Don't even worry about us. She's like, I'll make it up to you guys. We'll do three sessions in a row. I'm like, it's totally fine. Like, it's really fine. So, um, that was Friday. And then, did we do anything yesterday? No, we did nothing. Yeah, my daughter's new thing now is, what are we going to do today? And I'm like, nothing. Sometimes it's nice to just do nothing. P pandemic or not, like, I don't want to be getting dressed and having to go out of the house every single day and uh like that involves like if we're going for a walk around the neighborhood like i have to put a bra on you know what i mean like ugh, gross uh so we didn't do anything yesterday and then today was our journey to the market and so next week because it's a holiday week um we have no therapy so as much as i know this is going to stress me out and completely overwhelm me and stretch me super 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 thin we are going to see all of the grandparents next week so tuesday we will go to our ice skating session without our grandmother and then we will go pick up his mom and take her to the park and just pick up some food and we will just do like a park lunch, a picnic lunch in the park. We've done that quite a few times. And for those who are wondering, like, why wouldn't we just go to her house? My mother-in-law lives in a senior living, a senior housing community, not a living facility because she's totally independent. But, you know, we just, for the safety of those around us, would just like to keep it this way and she's been to our house uh but we know it's going to be nice so we're gonna do that and then wednesday we are going to drive down to see my parents who live about an hour and a half away and my parents i love my parents i love my parents my parents don't ever have anything to do at their house for my kid and every once in a while, my dad will be like, why don't we just turn on some cartoons for her? And I'm like, first of all, we're not, we didn't drive, you know, an hour and a half, two hours for her to watch cartoons. Like, but at what point are they going to, you know, get some stuff in their house? And I'm not saying they need to have like a playhouse or, you know, things like that, but at least a couple things, because if you've ever traveled with a small child of any age, you know it is not an easy task. Oh, I don't know where that just went. That was from a different color. Uh, you have to pack, in our case, the diapers, an extra change of clothes just in case because you never know, um, books, activities, toys, things like that. And then my mom says to me, well, we have that splash pad that we got last summer. And I know my mom had really good intentions. And I hope that you guys can, like, hear that I understand that. But what she's failing to understand is, okay, that means I have to go find water diapers. I have to find sunscreen. I have to find a bathing suit. I have to find a hat. Also, my kid can play in the water for, you know, 10 minutes or whatever it is. And I need to bring a towel for her. I mean, my parents will have a towel, but not the kind of towel she can wrap herself up in and then keep going. Because, you know, you wrap a tiny child in a adult size uh, towel and, well, you can't find that child anymore. But to tell you how little there is at my parents' house for my child to do, all week 
my daughter has been talking about Bella, which both of our mothers have dogs named Bella. So let me tell you how confusing of a conversation that was when she didn't, she couldn't understand that not every dog was named Bella, but she can't wait to go play with Bella's toys. Like she can't wait. She's been talking about this dinosaur toy that she has. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about, Briar. And nor should I, because it's not my dog. And also like, why is my kid trying to play with my mom's dog's toys? Well, you ask that to yourself. You say, self, why is this the case? Well, my mother has sent us home with the dog toys before because Briar had so much fun playing with them. And I'm like, if that doesn't indicate to you that your grandchild wants to play with toys, you know, and I'm, like I said, I'm not saying like she needs a whole like Barbie dream house or this or that, but if there were a couple little toys that she could play with at my mom's house. My dad, he left toys at. Yeah. Like, we have a little, it's like a bucket and the bucket converts to a hard hat. I use total air quotes there, but we leave it there. And the other thing is we can't bring soft friends into my parents' house because they have a dog. Obviously I just said that. And we don't want her to think those are her toys and destroy it. But also mommy's super allergic to dogs. So I don't need you bringing home your toy covered in the dog hair. And now the dog hair is all over my car, all over my house. All that fun stuff. So, I had said to her, like, Briar, I don't know if Bella still has that dinosaur. I want to play with the dinosaur. I want to play with Bella's toys. And I'm like, look, like, dog toys are not meant to have longevity. You know, they chew through them and then they get tossed away. But try explaining that to a kid who can't understand that. And then, so I said to my mom, like, Briar's been talking about this dinosaur toy my mom's like what and then briar starts describing it to my mom on the phone and she goes oh yeah we have that and i'm like oh my god this kid remembers it and it's been a while since we've seen my parents um but this is all she can think about right now so anyway oh my god i thought i was just doing the wrong color i did that the other day I put the wrong color down and spent like a half hour just pulling every one of them off so I said, mom, she really wants to do arts and crafts projects with you. And then I said, do you have any art materials? My mom is an artist, but my mom is a mosaic artist. So like not, you know, kid friendly kind of stuff to play with. So she's like, I might have some construction paper and I'm thinking, okay. So we got, I guess she does have one toy at my parents' house. So we got a... Crayola, uh, what's it called? Color Wonder, where the ink only shows up on that paper. We got that forever ago, and that has been at my parents' house. The problem is, we got that when Briar was much littler, and now she's like, I'm a pro with real markers, and she knows that real markers show up on the paper the second the pen touches it. So she gets real frustrated that these color wonders like take a second to register. You know, because toddlers have the best patience in the world. And so I'm looking up today like arts and crafts kits that I can get sent to their house from Amazon or have my dad order it off of Amazon or whatever. And I know that this means that if if there's nothing there, then I'd have to be bringing it with us, which would mean not only am I bringing the diaper bag and the change of clothes and the snacks and the toys, I'd also have to be bringing paper scissors and construction paper and markers and crayons and, and like, I just, like, at what age can you leave the house with, like, one bag for your, your kid and that be it and, like, not have to worry? I, I hope those days are sooner, but I know they're not. So, you know, there we are. I'm talking to my mom tonight. I said, Mom, did you find that construction paper? She goes, I have it all taken care of. I go, what does that mean? She goes, don't worry about it. I'm like, mm, so now I'm worried about it. Because, you know, if, if this the first 40 minutes of this video didn't express how much anxiety I have. So, it's just been like, all right, well, like, do, what does she have? <laughs> what did she get? 
I'm very appreciative, but I'm hoping that it's something that's not, you know, going to stain my child's clothing or my mother's house because my parents live in a really nice house with lots of really nice stuff in it. And um, that's one of the other things that's really hard. Like, they always have glass sculptures and, and things like that and I'm like mom can you she finally started moving it but it took a while I was like mom this is like right at her eye level you can't get mad at her for touching it when you're basically putting it in her face and then being like don't touch well of course she's gonna want to touch so that's what we're going to do Wednesday and then we have to double check the weather but we're also gonna go see my father-in-law uh you guys have missed it my father-in-law lives on a farm so while she loves to go see my parents when she sees her other grandfather she loves to see him for like such different reasons like he's got cows on his horns and he's got baby kittens in his barn and a tractor and like that's heaven to her oh speaking of heaven to her so on Fridays, the trash truck comes through. I didn't realize it, but now I know that the trash comes through first, then they go take it to the landfill, and then the same truck comes through and they do recycling. Now, where I grew up, they had, like, a recycling truck and a trash truck. They were different companies. But my daughter has recently discovered her love of the trash truck. And, like, we live in a neighborhood, so you can hear when they're coming down the street it's usually a trash truck or a delivery truck, like a FedEx, UPS, mailman. Um, you could just hear, they, they just sound different. So, like, we'll hear it and I'll be like, ooh, let me look out the window and I'll see that they're there. So, the last, I don't know, for the last month or so, we've been going out every day on trash day. And she stands out there and she waves to them and they honk at her and she talks to them. And, um, like, I know that this is a super common thing that kids like love trash truck like I don't know what it is if you love the trash truck let me know what it is that you love about it but the guy who drives the truck is always the same guy but the guys who are on the back of the truck they're always different um I don't know he said they do our area they're the only truck in our area so like they literally like one day they do this part of town and the next day they do this part of town and they just cycle through so I'm guessing that each guy works X amount of days and then he just drives truck and so he stopped the truck and he's like did you want to let her get in the truck like the front of the truck not the trash compactor part and he's like you can take some pictures and we were like yeah that'd be awesome so she's sitting in the trash truck like smiling ear to ear and all she's been talking about is how she got to drive the trash truck i don't know why i'm doing this in a small tray when i have like six trays on my desk but yet here we are and so she'll say like mommy i drove the trash truck you didn't you didn't drive it you you sat in it in front of our house um but they were telling us that the new bids go in in october so come october they might not be our our trash company anymore which I have a feeling that even if we get a different trash company, they'll still stop and honk and wave. Uh, hopefully it's the same like time of day. Because for us, they come, they usually come after therapy. So like after 10, they come for, usually it's recycling. But at that point, this, this week, they hadn't even picked up trash until that point. So, but she had a blast. She loved it. It was super cute watching her get so excited about the trash truck. But yeah, so next week we have um, a bit of a busy week. And I know, my husband knows, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot for all of us. Like, the easiest is probably going to be the day we go see his mom. But then again, it might not be because we're coming directly from ice skating. And you never know how she's going to be. And uh, she definitely gets... Like, she doesn't understand that she's hungry until she is like starving so hopefully she'll be all right like we get out of ice skating at like 10 30 so sometimes she's ready for lunch like right away like kid it's not even 11 o'clock like i'm pretty sure mcdonald's doesn't start serving lunch until 11 o'clock i might be wrong i don't know but so that's going to be our plan for the upcoming week so um 
you know, keep us in your thoughts for uh, our sanity and for traveling. Uh, I have one, like, question. If you have a child, my kiddo's three, three and a half. I can't tell if this is like a normal toddler thing or just like my kids driving us nuts kind of thing. But does every toddler repeat things over and over and over and over and over and over again? Because I swear this kid is going to drive me nuts. I really, I like, I can see it's driving him nuts. It's driving me nuts. Like, kid, you don't, like, today we were downstairs and in the span of like five minutes, she must have asked at least a dozen times, well, what's the weather like? Briar, it's still warm out. Well, what's the weather like? Look out the window. Oh, okay. What's the weather like? Briar, we've gone through this. It's really hot. It's 90 something degrees. But what's the weather like? I'm like, oh my God. And uh, this is every day with any topic. It could be one phrase that I repeated once and she's like, <gasps> I'm latching onto this. Look at these. If you're looking, I don't know why they are in forms of four. Can I put it right on my canvas? Ooh. I mean, I can, but now it's crooked. So, it didn't actually... Alright, well, there we go. Ta-da! This canvas, I will tell you, I've never worked on a Dreamer Designs before. Uh, I own one. I just... It was one of those you know, pay-for-shipping ones. I've never worked on one. This is my first one. They are generous with their ABs. This whole section here in her dress is ABs. The flowers here, like you, all of this that's not filled in is all ABs with the exception of like right here because I missed that color. So I'm really excited for that. I'm hoping I can finish this in a timely manner because I will be starting Knox's event next. Uh, and I, I will leave in the cards in the eye here around around what am I saying I did an event like what events I'm participating in uh, video and I will put that up there so you guys can see like what I'm working on next if you have any interest and um, information on some upcoming events that maybe I'm not participating in but I'm totally here for it or I'm cheering people along or whatever it may be so that should be a fun little video if you haven't already watched it but speaking of videos this is going to be the last thing I talk about before we head out because we are close to that hour mark here um, for anyone who has been around and followed the saga of Mary's Diamonds um, I got something in the mail the other day that I think might 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 I don't know for sure might be the replacement canvas my dilemma is that I've had such a shit experience with the company that I'm not sure if me putting up the video will be giving them more publicity or if it will give you guys some sort of resolution or closure on my drama I mean obviously I know that you guys probably aren't as invested in what's going on with me and Mary's Diamonds as much as I am invested in what's going on with me and Mary's Diamonds. So if that is something that you would like to see, um, it will be an unboxing and potentially comparison to the first canvas. Please let me know that down below. If you think that it's a terrible idea, also please let me know that. So, if you guys have made it this far, um, just a quick reminder to all of you that each and every one of you is loved, and every single one of us have different things going on in our lives, in our worlds, and nothing is more or less valid or more or less important, and that it is totally okay to not be okay so if you have made it this far please let me know whatever it is that you are working on and I am going to get out of here we got almost all of this section done tonight so 
That's lovely. I am adoring how this canvas is a nice combination of like the girl with the skeleton dress and the laser gun and the the dark, dark wings and then the beautiful like bright colors and the floral. It's a very cool combination of dark and, and beautiful. So thank you guys again so, so much for being here. Please make sure to give this video two thumbs up before you leave, one real life, one virtual. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Come join the Sparkle Squad. And while you are there, hit that notification bell. I heard you. Yeah. <laughs> he could see me, feel me staring at him. Hit that notification bell because I do not operate on any sort of schedule. I operate on toddler sander time. I record while she is sleeping or sleeping. Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.